President Trump, everyone, he was a supporter of the British decision to exit the European Union, but he has not said directly whether he prefers the rest of the European Union staying intact. For more, I'm joined by Hugo Gurdon. He's the editorial director for the Washington Examiner. And, and Hugo, let me start by asking you, first of all, where do you think Marie Le Pen is going to come out this weekend? I think she's almost certainly going to come out as one of the top two candidates. My guess is it'll be, uh, she will be in the runoff against Macron, the center-left candidate, mm -hmm. and that ultimately the center-left candidate will win because enough people are worried about Marine Le Pen and her policies that uh, more people will rally in the second round to Macron than to her. Are they trying to paint him, though, as a globalist, as an elitist? I mean, is this what they're sort of setting up with him in the center? Uh, yeah. But still being, you know, the, the, the former investment banker, et cetera. Exactly. He's very much part of the, what, what is criticized as the elite, certainly the establishment. And there's a common thread between what's happening in France, what we saw in Britain last June in the Brexit vote, and again here in the United States. The, the, the appeal of Le Pen is that she seems to be, she's winning support because she is speaking for a lot of people who are getting increasingly angry about the way in which their country is governed and is moving and they feel that their voice is not heard. They feel that an elite, a globalist elite, is moving their country in a direction they don't like and turning their country into something which they don't want. And, and it's happening everywhere, right? I mean, isn't this what we saw happen in Great Britain? It's what we saw happen here. We're going to get to Australia in a second, but this is what's going on in France. I mean, and the reasons why, I mean, one, you have the... the increase in ISIS and ISIS's presence and terrorism and then you also have what I keep referring to as this inequality between capital and labor right where labor has been almost unfairly punished and capital unfairly rewarded and while I'm a, a red-blooded American capitalist it, it has gotten slightly out of whack and and in doing so has caused this real revolt where we need to ask these questions how do we help the middle class to get ahead yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, that sometimes people who are opposed to very free uh, immigration are uh, chastised and mm -hmm. accused of being racists and bigots, etc. But the truth is that in this country, the, the data is pretty clear that um, uh, immigration has kept middle and lower, uh, middle class and uh, lower incomes. Low, while a lot of Let, people let's have... continue that comment because I, I, I'm short on time, but I want to ask you about Australia because yeah. you're seeing this yeah. wave of nationalism there as well. They have this new citizenship ship test uh, that they're out with, Hugo, and, and basically, to, so the viewer knows, the, the new rules state a person must live there at least four years. They've got to speak English fluently. They've got to conform to, quote, Australian values, right. and it tests uh, these limits. Basically, um, it, it, you know, it, and, and ask these people specifically, what is your take on these things? For example, they're saying, look, if you beat your wife, that's not coherent with Australian values. Therefore, we don't want you. Yeah, I, I think increasingly there, the people, people are worried that those who are migrating into their countries don't share any of their values and that... And don't an want to. And no, there's a very odd idea around at the moment, on the left, that somehow or other Western-valued countries, Australia, the United States, Canada, etc., those are the only values that cannot be protected. Uh, it seems to me that there's a, there's a, a rising, a swelling, uh, sort of almost a revolution against the mm -hmm. idea that countries can be changed without the approval of the citizens of that the country. People themselves, no, absolutely. And I mean, I keep going back to this. You know, as women as well, we need to stick up for other women. And as a, a culture, as a society, we cannot tolerate people who are treating women uh, as we have seen many in the, unfortunately, in the Islamic faith and that religion do. And that's part of what this Australian citizenship test is all about. Uh, yeah. Hugo, I hope to talk to you next week because it's going to get very interesting overseas. I look for forward sure. to it. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you.